going on, guys? Welcome back to The Loft. This is episode 32 with Quentin Aaron. Uh, you may know him as Big Mike from The Blind Side. A little bit of an unusual start for this episode just because we had to cut out the first 15 minutes or so, so there's no proper intro. Um, we had to cut it because the audio on his end was bad, and um, that was uh, uh, something I probably should have tried to fix at, in that moment, <clears throat> but I was so focused on having the conversation that I just didn't even think about it until it came time to edit, so I'm sorry for that. But if we talked about um, you know him getting on the blind side and getting his role and his start acting, so if you guys want to actually hear that stuff, uh, let's get this episode to 10 likes. It's funny to say that, but you know to get this episode to 10 likes, I will fly him out here for an in-person episode. Um, with that being said, uh, I'll be uploading today, tomorrow, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday this week. I have great episodes coming up that you guys will love, and I'm excited to get back into the, the routine and the flow of uploading again. Uh, I've just been a, in a big transition phase of my life. Um, I have been, you know, building a new studio and just working on a lot for Christmas. I have a huge PS5 giveaway announcement tomorrow. By the time you see this tomorrow, the uh, giveaway will be announced. I'm working with um, Philly Date Night. We're partnering together to give away a PS5. It's sponsored by Rob Wolf Real Estate. Um, but I'm super excited to show you guys and get this December month rolling. Uh, I just took a little bit of a break. I just kind of needed it mentally. So I'm sorry um, for not uploading. Sorry for the long intro, but I have so much going on. I'm super excited to share all of this with you. And I'm excited to be uploading again. We'll be probably be uploading. I'll try to go two in one week. But for now, I think we're going to do three episodes this week and then go once um, every week until Christmas. We have so much to talk about, so much to show you guys, and I'm super excited. So thank you guys so much for your support. And uh, yeah, let's get this December year going and end the year off right. And yeah, peace guys. You never know what someone's going through in their day to day. <laughs> it's amazing you just come full circle. And like sleep on the, on the pavement. never know what someone's going through in their day to day like I try not to take certain things to heart or or personal yeah. like certain attacks right. personal yeah um I was a lot better than that when I was younger than I am today yeah. I would say because <laughs> I, I think with age comes a lot of uh distress and yeah but then it, it just your temper temperament gets shorter and shorter Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, hundred like percent. Sometimes I could be quick tempered today. So yeah. I'm trying to reel that back and be more right. You know, what do now. you yeah, what do you tell kids who maybe struggle with uh finding their purpose or their you know, their like people who are on that journey and who people who are struggling on that journey? Is there anything in specific you tell them? Because I'm sure you didn't plan on being twenty two, twenty four and being one of the biggest movies of all time. Like what was your what uh, what kept you going? And also, what would you tell a kid who may be struggling with to find their purpose? Maybe somebody who's down on their luck right now or somebody who may have just got told no for a movie gig. Like, What's something you would tell them? Well, so first of all, for the ones that are trying to find their purpose, I say listen to your dreams. You know, be a dream chaser. I was a dream chaser. I'm here today because I'm a dream chaser. And being a dream chaser means that What's that one thing that if you woke up tomorrow and you could never do this ever again in your life, it would completely devastate you? What's that one thing? Because that's what you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that one career path? Like, if it's science, chase science. If it's being a doctor, right. chase being a doctor. If it's being an entertainer of some sort, chase that. If it's being an athlete, chase that, make that your purpose and go after it because we aren't given dreams for no reason. We're given them for the sole purpose of making that our path in life. Right. You know, I, I, I knew I wanted to be an actor before I knew what an actor was. Mm. And the first time I found it out, I was already in drama because my mom put me in drama because I was driving her crazy around the house. <laughs> pretending to be the characters that I watched on TV. Like I grew up right. trying to be Batman, James Bond, Michelangelo, the Ninja Turtle, you know, right. <laughs> that, that one almost got my behind whoop because I, <laughs> I was, my mom had some orange stockings for work and I used to cut holes in them and wear them as my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Eight or nine years old and she put me in drama in school. 
and I did this play during Black History Month. And, you know, I was on stage, remembered all my lines, did my performance, and I had everyone, like, bending to my will. Like, everything I wanted them to do, they did. They laughed when I wanted them to. They all would when I wanted them to. They were getting sad. I was like, and for the first time, I felt like I was able to control the audience's emotions based on my performance. And that's what sparked that love for me to do what I do now as an actor, because it was mm. like, I, you know what I mean? It's, it, that was like the first time I felt like kids weren't just laughing at me just to make fun. They were laughing because I did something funny. Right. You know, right. And, or my peers, like, you know, they were presenting their emotions. And then after the show, having them come up to me and congratulate me and, and everything, it was just, it was cool. Yeah. And, Did you ever find solace in like acting in terms of like, um, maybe you weren't comfortable with who you are at a, at a time in your life. Was there ever, was, was there like solace? And cause I know a lot of actors yeah. go through that where they're like, they, they are so much more comfortable being in another person being you someone know, else, yes. on a set. Like, and that, cause I know like a lot of times, like there's a lot of actors who are like, who you were in love with in the movie and you meet them in person and they're just completely different. Like, yeah. is, is, was that something you may, you might've went through? It was, it was, it happened for me a lot younger. Uh, it was the reason why my mom put me in drama because before, like I said, before I knew what acting was, when I came home from school, remember I would, I would, I'd be in school where I'm being bullied, beat up, tortured, you know, freaking, I got thrown down the stairs more times than I can count. I got stabbed with pencils. I got chased all the way home with chains and dogs from school where I had to run haul ass all the way home until I got inside my gate and locked them out before I can breathe, you know? And yeah. uh, So that was my world at school. It was miserable. I hated it. And I get home and the first thing I want to do was escape. So my escape was to put on my favorite movie or put on my favorite show and then start pretending to be those characters that I like. And for me, it was just like, when I, when I got older and I looked back, I was like, I, I was trying to escape. I was trying to escape my reality by being these people because I really wanted to be. I told my mom, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be James Long one day. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to be. Yeah. And she's like, you're black. I say, I'm going to be the first black James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you know hey, what I mean? So. They got a, they got a roll open now. So. Exactly. You exactly. should go for it. <laughs> well, I heard, I heard a couple of years ago that Andrew's elbow was trying to do it. So I was like. <laughs> oh, dude, he would kill it. I ain't going to lie. Kill he, it, he would Idris kill it. Idris Elba, bro. That dude. I, I got to show you. You know who Idris Elba is? Mm-hmm. Let me show you one. That's why I couldn't even be mad, bro. I was this like, dude. Yeah. yeah he's, he, yeah, he's the black James Bond. I got you. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm in your corner, bro. But <laughs> this guy, he would do a much better yeah. job. This dude's been in like Absolutely. everything, man. Yeah, he's, yeah, that dude's the goat. I so, met him actually. He's he's a really cool dude. Yeah, yeah, I met him. But we do have sponsors for this episode. Um, shout out to them, and they are Cats, Dolls, Canine, Hustle and Glow, and Brittany Keys Realty. Um, Brittany Keys is one of the top realtors up and coming in the Philadelphia area. She works in houses in North Philly, uh, Fishtown. She even helped me get an apartment, you know, this, this apartment that I have now. Check her out. And if you need anyone for real estate, she's the one to go to. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Britt. Hustle & Glow is a luxury mobile spray tan business in the heart of Port Richmond that serves all Philly and its surrounding areas. There are plenty of times people choose not to get a spray tan or have trouble getting spray tans because of the inconvenient travel. No one wants your kids, car troubles, etc. At Hustle & Glow, we offer a variety of services such as single spray tan sessions, group spray parties, and bridal party spray tan packages conveniently in the comfort of the client's home. For more information or to see our work, you can check us out on Instagram at Hustle & Glow or book directly through Hustle & Glow website. I will have linked in the description as well. This episode is also sponsored by Cats, Dogs, Canine. Cats, Dogs is a one-stop shop for all of your dog needs with training, grooming, boarding, daycare, and more. Located on 35 Mobile Road in Perkinsy, PA, check out Cats, Dogs, Canine, and let them know the loft sent you. Man, you're a fortunate guy. <laughs> you're very yeah. fortunate. So once you got into acting, was that, did you find like that was your escape at that point? Did, did you feel like, okay, now I escape, like um, I'm where I want to be? Yeah, it was like a. Oh, you talking about uh, professionally or when I started doing it in school? Professionally. Professionally. Um, so I did my first movie 
in New Jersey, in Passaic, New Jersey, back in 2008. This was, uh, no, no, it came out 2008. I did it in 2006. It was called Be Kind Rewind with Jack Black, Danny Glover, mm. uh, Mos Def. That's a pretty good first movie with Jack Black. and Yeah. That's it, impressive. Yeah, it was cool, man. Like, being on set with all of them. And then, uh, yeah, Mos Def. Sigourney Weaver did a cameo in it. And it was so oh, cool because wow. I was standing on the uh, sidewalk one day for one of the shoots. And she comes across the street and stands next to me. And she goes, you're tall. And then she was like, let's take a selfie. And she had one of those Polaroid cameras. That's Sigourney Weaver. She was in like... She's been in like, and, yeah. Yes, this girl's this woman's been in like everything, man. Alien. Alien, yeah. Avatar. Yeah. Avatar, yes. Yeah. She she uh she came across she she had one of those Polaroid cameras, you remember the ones you go sh- Yeah, sh- I got I got one of them. Those are those are cool, man. Those yeah. are pretty cool. We just saw one this weekend. Yeah. Just get getting the you film know, is the hard part. Dude, but I like, want the I want the ones that you snap and then the, the picture comes out the and bottom. it prints out the I, bottom. Yeah, I have one I of them. One of those, bro. They're I'm, pretty cool. My mom and dad still have one. Yeah, they're it's, they're, it's they're, insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the aesthetic of it. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I, you know, I used to yeah. have mom used to have this big album book, and she would have those Polaroids in there, like take them out the thing and put it right in the book. I said, right. I got to get that. I got to go old school again. Because like <laughs> when I have kids one day, I want them to be able to turn through a book and see all these pictures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what I I complain about taking pictures all the time, whether it's yeah. with my son. Well, I don't complain about taking pictures with my son, but like family parties and stuff like that. But like having a book that you can open up and, and look at old that. exactly, and like yeah. look at the old times and like exactly. you know you look at faces. It's you need that in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you need that for the you, present and the future. You tend to thank yourself later when you take a lot of pictures. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. My uh, my buddy is also one of our co-hosts. He's designing an app that's kind of centered around that, and we're going to be coming on talking about it in the future. We're still in the process of building it, but he's he wants to develop an app like that that encourages people to like capture the moment and be present you know what yeah. I mean? um because i don't i personally don't see much wrong with it with like taking pictures and like videos like granted if you're like some you know how girls are on like snapchat and shit but it's like yeah. there's nothing wrong with like capturing a picture or something like that yeah um, no, no no definitely it's a it's a moment in time that you choose to cherish and remember and re- i mean right. remember you know you want it to live on Absolutely. So you um, capture it in a photo. Yeah. I see you post a lot of pictures on Instagram with people when you're out visiting and stuff like that. Um, so you're working on a, a you currently start a production company, right? That's why you've been super uh you've been super busy. Yeah, uh, man. I talk am. a little bit about a little bit about your production company and, and the what's behind that. Yeah, so uh it's called Nomadic Leo Entertainment. It's okay. uh with me and my business partner John Russell. <laughs> um we're both Leos and we live nomadic lifestyles. Like, there you go. <laughs> around all the way. So, like, yeah, and we love makes entertaining. Sense. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just felt like it was a double entendre. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, so um, basically, the purpose of the production company was to be able to take all of that ideas that's been in my head and create them. So take right. take what started as a thought or a dream or whatever and turn it into a script and turn it into an actual project. So I, I have like a slate of things that we're developing right now that, you know, just they are roles that I've always wanted to do. You know, they're mm-hmm. going to we're going to hit all of those fathoms. I got action. I have um, comedy. I have romantic comedy. Action comedy, zomedy. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a that, sucker that, for rom com, so you, you know, know I'll be watching the rom coms for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's my favorite uh, genre. Actually, I'm a big softy. Yeah, like, my mom used See, to call me a hopeless romantic. Listen, there's nothing. You know there's nothing. If Quentin Aaron can be a softy, then you know I think it's anybody perfect. can be a softy. Listen, I'm not. Exactly. I'm not like I'm not against that, man. Showing your emotions and just kind of just exactly. you know, you know what it's I mean? super like, important. Yeah, it's. I think the age of men acting like they don't have feelings is over, bro. Like, oh, completely. We, we got feelings. We want to be loved too, man. Yeah. Like, and these girls yeah, understand man. that, you know. Hundred percent, girl. Yeah, girls gotta understand that. Guy. I mean, everyone's gotta understand that. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, 
you know and and i think some people feel some people like that you know some people like when someone's able to open up and communicate and you know be present because like yeah granted like you don't want to be a softy all the time because then you just get walked all over but like you know humanizing humanizing yourself and being vulnerable is super important to any relationship friendship and you know what i mean and communication and stuff you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i feel like as a as men we're all men here like you know you almost feel like you have to hold it back yeah. them emotions and the tears and how you're feeling if you're in front of your friends, your girlfriend, your wife, whoever, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you you we got so built up that you gotta withhold and withstand that yeah. person that they build it up. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, hundred percent. You don't have to be like that. It's okay mm. to cry and laugh and be exactly. happy and be sad and whatever. And people don't understand that. Yeah, for you sure. know, you know what it is is um. Over the years, I've gained a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight into human emotion, and I've come to understand that uh, holding it in is toxic. Yeah, hundred percent. Holding it in is dangerous and it's harmful to not only yourself but to those around you. Right. Um. I always say everyone has a thermometer and the more that you keep your feelings, uh, how you say compressed or su- suppressed, yeah, 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 suppressed, yeah. suppressed, you know, that, that thermometer is getting towards the boiling point. It's, right. like, it's almost like, think about the anger emotion, for instance, this doesn't hurt, but if somebody keeps doing this, after right. a while it's gonna get annoying as shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not gonna feel good after a while because you keep doing that you, in that same area, you're gonna start to feel it more right. than you would, and then you're gonna snap it. Like, what are you doing? You know, scream one. Yeah. They're yeah. gonna look at you like you're crazy. Like, what what? Right. If right. you if you wanted me to stop, just say stop. Why'd you have to scream yeah. at me? It's yeah, it's you know? it's not the act, it's the repetition of the act that exactly and, that, and that's what and that's what breaks a lot of people in terms of like whether we're talking about addiction or we're talking about um, self confidence or anything. It's like okay. somebody calling you ugly or something may not hurt you the first time, but it'll hurt you the tenth time because it'll you know because it'll kind of put in your head like, oh, am I actually ugly or, or am I actually this or that? And it's like, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, but it's you know like, what though, with with those things like with the words, see my mom gave me the key to how you say uh the verbal abuse okay that i used to take growing up she said your truth lies in here no one on the outside is in here so they don't know your truth so it's just speculation that they're spitting at you right it's just hearsay you know what i mean it's only true if you believe it in here so if that's the case then no matter what they call you doesn't make any sense it's people know? yeah it, it's it's uh it's people putting ideas out there and it's your choice whether or not to believe it and oh, that, yeah, exactly and i think something like like a lot of people struggle with um letting that letting that decide their life and decide their future you know exactly. what people say is that i think you know what i mean a lot of people like they let that get in their head a little too much you know, yeah. cause it, it's a speculation. Like you, like you said, like, it's just like, it's not, it's not real. It's not tangible unless you make it tangible. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, well, like someone calling you ugly can be, all right, you called me ugly, go, you know, go screw yourself. But like, but if you, if you make it bigger than what it is and put it on a pedestal, then that's when it becomes real. When exactly. it starts to affect your daily routine and affect your life, that's when it becomes real. Exactly. You know, you know it's, a, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, um, if I do something that, uh, if I do something that makes no sense to someone and they choose to tell me this makes no sense and I choose not to explain myself, that person that doesn't understand is not in the wrong. I'm the one that's in the wrong because they told right. me what the issue was. The thing is we right. have to verbalize right. things we have issues with, but right. we get to comfortable with not wanting to express our issues or right. verbalize or communicate it in a right. sense to where either we don't want to sound dumb or we don't want right. to put someone through certain discomfort 
I, you know what I mean? I, I'm right. If I don't know, so I don't be the first one to say I don't know. It is right. my pride plays no part yeah. in it yep. because you know if I if I stop myself from asking questions that I right that I that I need to ask because of my lack of understanding of what's right. going on, it's gonna make me look more uh more dumb down the road. You right, know, it's not the and, word I was looking for, but yeah, and the, yeah, I just so I just like. I learned that the smartest people are the ones who ask the most questions. Exactly. Like, the ones who want to, and like, cause they, they may ask questions behind closed doors. Like, and, but when it comes to putting it in the practice, they, it, people, it comes off like they know everything, mm-hmm. but, and, that, and that's like, that's, that's, that, that kind of happens a lot with like, like you look at like a, a directors like Steven Spielberg or anyone big and act, actors such as yourself, like, you guys ask questions in the beginning, you know what I mean? But yeah. that's not necessarily what was put out there in the world, but behind closed doors, you got, you maybe you may have asked so many questions. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you do your homework, you're going to have yeah. questions because right. the, the reality is no two minds are alike. Right. Everyone's and, and, different. And that's a beautiful thing though. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really be- yeah, the and, world um, would be boring if everyone was the same, you know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, and so we're all uniquely different. We all bring something different to the table. And right. and I have a very collaborative spirit. Like I love collaborating with other creatives because right. it, it 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 enhances the art. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. When you when you have a vision for something, it doesn't necessarily mean that your vision should be the end all be all. It means make sure that you take everything that you visualize and put it on the table. And then when you have your other creatives come around and see what you brought to the table, let their ideas come and attach to that. You know, let that be the grass root and then let the other branches and twigs and attach to it. Now you have a whole tree of life. You know what I mean? Because you've allowed, you've allowed other creatives to, you know, piggyback off of what you started and right. turn it into something that you could only a dream of. You know what I mean? So it's like, right. I think <clears throat> I'm a firm believer in, 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 you know, team sports. I think right, right. it's best to have a team of, you know, people around you that not only right. can get the job done, but are all smarter than you. Like, right. I don't, I don't want to be the smartest person on my team. Right. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. You never should. You should never you be. I mean? Ab- absolutely. Because you're doing yourself a disservice. Exactly. Because I don't stun- know everything and I know I don't know everything. Yeah. It so stuns your growth. Exactly. Yeah. If I got a team made up around me of people who know less than I do. Right. How can I how grow can you, yeah. successfully? Right. And it leads, it kind of leads back to like, I talk about this a lot, Um, like the compound effect. Like, you know, it's if your vision doesn't adjust or change over time, like then you're doing something wrong. Everything has to evolve. I firmly believe everything has yeah. to evolve. And you know, the comp it kind of comes down to the compound effect where it's like little ideas come together from different collaborators to make one bigger idea. That's yeah. ultimately bigger, bigger than yourself. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, um, real quick, I wanted to hit on, like, you meant you mentioned something super important to me. Like, not everyone understands your vision in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like not everyone's going to understand your plan, yeah. but it is your job and your duty to to present that to them, or at least um, not necessarily. You don't owe them anything. Yeah. But if someone's curious about what your goal is and what your vision is, you should be able to tell them, and it's important to show them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I Give, would say make sure you show the right people. Right. Because you, it's your job to pick and choose who you show it to, because not everyone is for you. So. If you, right. if you have a team of people that you're doing something for, you want to make sure that you're getting the right people involved in your vision, not just any or right. everybody that you choose because yep. not everyone has your best uh, interest interest at heart. You know, and, and, and the thing I used to, you know, deal with back in the day is I was, when I think of something that I feel is cool, I'd be so happy to tell my friends and you know, and, and right. I had to stop doing that because not all of my friends thought like me and right. not all of my friends um, were the kind of friends I needed them to be at the time that I approached them with my thoughts. 
And so I always say this, uh, God always puts people in your life, whether it's a group of friend, friend, a, a group of friends, one person, whoever, like they're there for a reason. I may not know the reason. You might not know the reason. Right. You might not know the reason. Who knows? But they're there for a purpose. We're all here for a purpose. Like, for instance, me and Kev went to high school together. Kev, how many times in high school did we talk? Probably zero. Probably zero. <laughs> God yeah. put us here together exactly. for a reason. You know and, what I mean? You know, sometimes the, the people that you grow closest to, you've known them for years. You just haven't right. been close to them for years because sometimes it's like you guys both individually need time to grow and to right, who you're right, going to become right. before you guys can coexist together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And that's even more relationships. Like, mm. I'll see a girl that I like, but right now, mentally, either he, I mean, either she nor me are ready to coexist together. And that's... So, you yeah. know what I mean? So we both have some growing that we have to do. Hi, you guys. Um, so we both have some growing that we have to do before we can reach that level of cohabilitation or whatever you call it. I think yeah. I just made a word up. And that's <laughs> one of the hardest things for people to grasp. Is, exactly. And that personally, for me, like I've lost some good people because of that. You yeah. know, maybe right person, wrong time. It's like, you know, you guys just mentally aren't ready to be with each other or mentally ready to be friends with each other. Exactly. But down the line... God always has a plan. It always leads back to everything happens for a reason. Exactly. And you know what I mean? And then when you come, you guys come together at that right time, it's like, okay, now, now, now we're going to see if this works. Now we're going to get the business, get down to mm -hmm. business and stuff. You know what I mean? So I use that saying a lot. And one of my closest best friends who I'm, um, he's also my, our fire company. Um, he went through a lot, you know what I mean? Like he's got a lot of mental health that he, takes care of by himself. He talks to me, whatever. And I always say to him, I'm like, Paul, everything happens for a reason. Right. He goes, I hate you for saying that. He goes, what's the reason? I said, I, I can't tell you the reason, but for whatever reason, it didn't right. work out. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be. Stop mm -hmm. forcing the, stop yeah. forcing it. Let it come to you. Whatever exactly. it is, job, girlfriend, friends, money, What? let it come to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But keep your head on straight. Yeah, and that, that leads personally for me. I don't know how you feel about this, Quentin, but like personally for me, I'm starting to try to um, push myself to for delayed gratification mm -hmm. um, in terms of like, you know, it's it's a, I, I use this saying a lot. It's like getting McDonald's. Like the idea of McDonald's is so good. But it's <laughs> and, so big. And then when you have it right after you think about it, it like you realize it, it, you feel like dog shit. You know, it's like, yeah. Whereas, like, if you're able to train yourself to be like, hey, you know what, maybe uh, let's eat healthy today or let's go work out. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. tra training yourself for delayed gratification is like, is going to help you in the long run. But it's just so hard to do in the in the, the time you're in it. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, another thing to, to when you when you get used to bad habits. Somewhere. Mm -hmm somehow i feel like we believe that we deserve the way we feel right because of the bad habits we succumb to so right. it's like for instance for me i know that i feel like crap sometimes after i eat like crap but my body or my mind has convinced me at times that that's the normal right. you know i'm gonna feel that way and so i'll make excuses oh it's just because i'm getting old or you know, right, right. my bones are weak or, um, you yeah, know, yeah. It, yeah, this yeah. is happening or that's happening, but it's just, we need, I have to trick myself to reverse my thinking and, and start right. to say, no, you deserve better than what you are currently experiencing. Right. So treat yourself better, you know, right. stop putting the bad uh, fuel into your body and put the good fuel so that you can operate right. better. You know, right. like, yeah. yeah. Your body puts itself in a like survivor mode, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it naturally wants to find the easiest way out. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're able to tell yourself, Hey, listen, like it's all, it all comes down to the breaking those habits is like, 
the only way to get over something is to go through it. And mm-hmm. and it's like, and you, and you, you have to put yourself in that uncomfortable situation just to like, cause you naturally will adjust. It's like your body will naturally adjust. Like, like for me personally, like when I moved out, like I moved out of my family house, um, a month ago today, actually. And oh, it's wow. like, yeah. So it's like, that was like the first big step I've taken in my life. Really? Like I, I almost was, wanted to say congratulations, but I was like, Oh wait, I don't know if that's a congratulations. No, no, it's a, no, it's a, no, 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 no. I appreciate that. No, it's a good, it's, it's a big thing. It's a good thing. It's okay, like, okay, cool. like I'm like, I moved out. I like, I, I went to temple university. So, you know, I, I had a house there, but it was like, my parents are paying rent. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I was paying it. Like, this is the first time in my life where I really took responsibility and like really took that, like that action, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, you kind of, I forced myself to be put in that situation and I'm lucky. I have great people around me to support me, but like Mm -hmm. I had to put myself in that situation. And now it's like my mind's naturally adjusting. Um, I feel like I've grown this past year more than I ever have in my life. You know, I, I've cut yeah. talks to people out. I've, you know, I've made those tough decisions that I've had to make. And, and I've also, you know, put myself in a position to grow. And it's like, and like the idea of it doesn't sound great. Like in terms of like, am I ready for this? Am I prep? Am I prepared for this? But you, you, you are most of the time you are because, you know, yeah. you, it's like, it's like, t- it all leads back to taking that leap. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's, and it's something that every actor does. Every, everybody does in their life. You exactly. know, so it's like, and it's like you 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 learn that like like you start to realize how much you're actually growing as a person exactly. when you are able to challenge yourself. You know what I mean? And like and, and you see what your potential actually is. Exactly. I I a long time ago I I started to think about thoughts and how even thoughts happen for a reason. So it's like when you think that you're ready for something bigger than you are. So start doing bigger things than you have been doing because you're not going to reach something bigger doing the same thing you've been doing. You know, I was watching the show, The Rookie, uh, a few weeks ago on <laughs> one of the cops, Smitty. He's just kind of like the, the jag off on the show, but he kind of, <laughs> he said this quote and I'm like, that was actually that made some sense what was it i don't know where he got it from but um he said he said if you if you want to reach new horizon you gotta not be afraid to lose sight of the shore right so he said or something like if you want to swim to new horizons you can't be afraid to lose sight of the shore so like Right. You know, the shore is yeah. back there behind you. Yeah, it's 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 leaving. It's sort of leaving where you've come from. It's what you it's like. Exactly. It's leaving what you've known your entire life. You step out of your comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, yeah. you step into it, look at it like uh, yesterday, today and tomorrow. You know, yesterday is already done. We can't do nothing to change what happened yesterday. Right. Today is a present. It's a gift because we're living in a new moment. So we're right. seeing things in real time tomorrow is that corner up ahead that we haven't turned yet right because we don't see it it's not here yet so we we gotta do everything we can on this trip today to brace ourselves for that corner that we're going to turn tomorrow where we're going to experience a whole new block you know a whole new you know (laughs) avenue of of decisions obstacles challenges roadblocks Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's and it's sinkholes, you know. Yeah. And it, it's important to take those. You know, I, I always say this too. Like, I watch a Jay Shetty podcast with uh, Mike Posner, and he says, uh, location, uh, it's location has energy and time has memories. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's always important to like understand where you're at and also use what, where you've been for the future. You know, it's not necessarily, you, you don't necessarily want to just keep yourself locked in the same place all the time because exactly. naturally you're going to outgrow it. You're going to plateau, but it's important to take what you've learned from that to compound that and incorporate it into where you go next. And I, I think that's something that I, I mean, I personally, I struggle with it, but I know a lot of people just struggle with like the unknown and, and yeah. trying something new and, you know, you know, because, but from my experience for this past month, I've learned that you can get a lot from it. You know, yeah. I feel like I've, inspired myself so much in terms of like 
my creative, my creativity and like just the business side of things. Like, cause now you got to pay rent, you got stuff to pay for. You gotta, you mm -hmm. gotta force yourself to hustle even harder than you were before. I was so yeah. comfortable with my mom making me dinner every night and my wash being done and folded because my parents are so good to me, and but you, it was like such a detriment. Yeah, you kind of like, yeah, yeah you and I'm, I'm a naturally, I'm a very naturally independent person. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always believe in like, I like, I want to do this my way. I want to do it, you know, however, somebody but just it's hit like, you in the face with the mic. Oh, did it turn off? No, I said somebody just hit you in the face with the mic. Oh, uh, no, my, no, my mic kind of slipped off the thing. <laughs> like, Listen, we're I'm still in the process of building the, the studio, right? The person, the mic is like, <laughs> that's my producer. That's no, I'm kidding. <laughs> now nah, we're still in the process of building the studio. And, um, you know, so we, if, I'll show you that, like when we're done filming what it looks like right now. But we're, uh, we have a new couch coming in Wednesday. We're going to make it a whole nice. set. So I'm super excited to do that. Nice. And then the, I would love, I mean, hey, in the future, if you're not too busy, I'd love to fly you out and have you come to the set, you know, that'd and have cool, you sit man. here in person with us. Yeah, that'd be super cool. But, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, no, I mean, it's like, if there's anything that a person can take from listening to this, it's like, this is why I love having guests such as yourself. Like you, like, you know what I mean? You're not just big Mike, but like, that's one of the uh, accomplishments and accolades you have in your life yeah. that has led you to where you are now. And it's because you took that leap. It's because you were bullied. It's because you were, you know, you were down before and you, mm -hmm. you took that and you didn't let it deter you. You let it inspire you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it led you to, and it led you to being, to be co-stars with probably one of the most beautiful girls in the world, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, if <laughs> you, you know? watch this in some way, I'd love to have you on. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. but you get my point though. It's like, exactly. it's like those actions and the belief in yourself is what ultimately led you to, you know, Your talk, dream. talking to Jake Joan Hall and yeah. doing these cool things at such a young age. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like, and I know you instill that in the people you talk to and then the kids you talk to. Um, yeah. But, uh, a, you know, um, you're the only person that can stop those dreams from happening. You know, facts, absolutely it's, it's, facts. You, nobody knows them until you tell them. Right. Just keep it, keep it to yourself. Keep your head down and work hard, and believe that you belong there. You know, right. believe that you will get there, and right. then you'll do it. Right, and and something too, I I want to touch on really quick is like, no one's gonna understand you in the beginning. Nope. They're not they're not supposed to understand you because that's they why don't... you're supposed to keep it to yourself. Right, in but, the beginning. But you know? uh, people look through validation through others. So when they don't get it mm -hmm. right away, that they don't get the initial like they don't get that reaction they want. It's like that's why it's so important not to put stress on results and numbers because people yeah. aren't going to understand it right away. But it's like there's going to be that one time where somebody um, who's bigger than you or somebody sees it or sees what you're doing mm -hmm. and believes in that. like, And now all of a sudden the whole world believes in it because everyone has a herd mentality. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if everyone's talking about this one thing, most likely everyone's going to have that general opinion. You know, it's like yeah. like uh, for the Sixers, Ben Simmons is a fucking crybaby because he wants to leave the Sixers. Like some, you know what I mean? It's like everyone starts to talk about that. And yeah. people who, who don't even watch sports may be like, oh, Ben Simmons is a baby. You know what I mean? Like, but it, it's a fact. It's a fact. But um, <laughs> but uh, but you know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, yeah, it's just like you have to have that distinction of like and that and that unwavering belief in yourself. You can't jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> Yeah, and, and but it, it and that, and that yeah. comes through that comes through time and it comes through repetition. You know, it's like when my, and, what, yeah, what, time, repetition, self discovery. Yeah, um, listening to yourself because um, a lot of times, what I say in the beginning, we have to take time and find out who you are first as an mm -hmm. individual. Learn how to like and learn how to love yourself mm -hmm. because you'll hold yourself to a certain standard and you'll expect people around you to do the same. And when they don't meet the standards that you have set up for yourself, you'll know who to exclude from right. your circle. Because yeah. when you don't have love or likeness for yourself, you're, you're steady at the bottom. Yeah. And it's and, hard for you to rise because you don't have the right people around you because you don't right. know what you need. Right. Right. Because you don't hold yourself to a value. Right. And and you yeah, and you um you depend on another person 
for exactly. what you're for what you're looking for in yourself. You the you you, exactly. you try to and you know what I'm saying? Come like, from within. Yeah, you know. I, yeah, I would love for you to give my sister a phone call because this is like this is stuff. She, I have I have a twin sister, and like this is stuff she needs to hear. You know, because it's, she's somebody who struggles with there's certain things in her life she struggles with, and it's like it's super. And I told her, told her this today because we were talking today, mm-hmm. but I was like, hell, like, and I know she works on it, but it's like you have to just like have that belief in yourself. You have to, you know what I'm saying? Have that drive within yourself. And, and yeah. it takes time and it takes through practice. And it, it also, take time. I'm still working on it with yeah, certain aspects we, we, of my we life. We all are. Everybody you know? is, you know, it's yeah, a, every- it's a, it's a marathon for sure. It's not a right. One day you're completely healed and never have to work on it ever again. No, this right. is a work on right. it all the time type of situation. Right. And it's, it's kind of what McGregor says is it his confidence comes from his preparation. You know, exactly. like, like everything that he does behind the scenes that he works on himself mm-hmm. is what leads him to do the McGregor walk on stage and, you know, exactly. knock out Jose Aldo in 13 seconds. It's like, exactly. yeah, you know I mean, it, it all comes through the preparation, through your, re- through your regimen, through your, your, your routine, your, you know, yeah, so. your routine, your dedication, your, your manic work ethic, your belief, right. you know, you got to yeah. believe in yourself. Or else your hard work is for nothing because you're doing a whole bunch of things you don't believe in. Right. You know, if Absolutely. you believe in yourself and like yourself and love yourself, right. that hard work has such a bigger meaning to it because you're doing all of this work and putting this work in for something that you not only believe in, but you believe that you deserve right. to be involved in. You know, so right. like... right. If I if I have a low opinion of myself, I'll never get the girl of my dreams. Because right. some part of me is telling myself that I don't deserve her. Right. right. But if I have a high opinion of myself because I love myself, and I deserve you. It. You know what she I mean? May, I mean? She may not deserve you. She may question if she even deserves you in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, and one one thing I do know is that having a bigger better opinion of yourself doesn't mean that you know two people are going to meet and they're going to be perfect and not have to put any work in you know we they come we come to each other incomplete because we complete each other throughout the way we have to learn one another so like when you grow up with you and learn how to love you and then another human being comes into play then you have to do that work all over again but to someone else you know the, almost the same way you had to learn to love yourself you now have to learn to love this other person and vice versa because it, it's it's a part of this whole journey of right. self-discovery but also yeah. discovery you know we're, no two yeah. people are the same so i mean now that you learn to love what you know you have to learn to love what someone else knows <clears throat> right a person should never complete you they should compliment you you exactly. Know what I mean, I firmly believe that because it's something I struggled with. My parents' relationships, maybe like you know, a person should always compliment your life. They should always add to it, and you're gonna have to adjust and make mm-hmm. time for them naturally. But they should mm-hmm. never complete you, in the sense that their love is the only thing that makes you realize that okay, I am loved. I am loved. It should oh, always yeah. come from yourself. But they I should think, compliment yeah, I you. Think though. God's love is what completes us um right but what i meant by completing is is that you know we're we're a work in progress until we both work things out together because you know they say in marriage you become one yeah that that's what i meant by the complete yeah 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 100 like, absolutely you absolutely. know as a, as when you you're become a team. As one yeah it's a team you know exactly but like yeah you're right though you know it's we don't we don't look in I actually just told a friend of mine the same thing. Don't look to other people for your happiness. Don't look to other people for love. You know, right, look to God right. and look within yourself. Right. If you can't be happy with yourself, how are you going to be happy with this person? Right. And, and yeah, and like on a lighter note, it's like if you're able to just like love yourself, that energy will radiate and, you know, people attract the right people. Right. It'll attract the right person. Exactly. It'll bring the right people in. And it'll lead like 
by you doing what you not want to do and and finding validation in yourself and making yourself happy, you're going to find somebody who's going to see that and will ultimately be able to make you happy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause it'll be the right person, you know, you know, that the, um, you're not like you're going out looking for the first person who gives you attention is going to be the person you date because that's not, not necessarily always the right answer. I, th- I think a lot of times what's attractive, attractive to people is what we see in other people. Right. right, they come from, and men are a little bit simpler than women. So if you if you think about a woman's process and being attracted to a guy, it has almost has nothing to do with the the look of the guy only. Right, it has everything to do with how the guy is upkeeping his life. Right, you know. Right. So, you know, the first thing the look attracts the attention. Mm. so it's not she's just she's not gonna say oh he's hot i'm gonna jump in the bed with him i'm gonna give him the rest of my life <laughs> right he's gonna say hmm he's cute let me see what else he got going for him right then she's gonna check out the clothes then she's gonna check out the car it's like she's the gonna Instagram, check, you, it's you like know what i mean exactly yeah, yeah. she's yeah, gonna I'm see just... all of that but the look is what initially invested her interest right so with guys we a little bit more simple than that uh, like you, you could be a, a multi-millionaire you pull up to mcdonald's to get a shake and the chick at the window look fine you know what time you get off <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know I mean? yeah man 100 <laughs> you know what i mean so it's yeah like, but it's yeah. like <clears throat> i i think it's a uh, there's there's an important aspect to both of both men's lives and women's lives that they need to consider do you ever think about how when you're being raised, whether you're a guy or a girl, when you're being raised by your parents, you're almost never taught to look for the things that are in the marriage vows. So the, right. the first time you hear those vows is when you're reciting them. Isn't that to crazy? the person that you're getting married to, you know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. most daddies girls are are being taught you know you find you a guy with a good job and you know good credit that can take care of you and this that and the other rather it's the 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 mother or the father telling the daughter that and so she goes out with these principles in her head i need to find me a good dude that has a good job and what's his bank and, account look like exactly, exactly. It's all comes back on the money and so yeah. that's and, why women are taught to size up these guys to see what materialistic value they hold so that they can feel like they qualify to be in their life or, or right. they meet a certain standard that deserves the woman to be in their life. And right. guys, I don't think, I can't say for, for most men because I, I, I didn't grow up knowing my father, mm. but I don't think for most, unless you really had that kind of relationship with your mom and she taught you the values of loving a woman and, and how to treat them. Mm. I don't think a lot of guys were taught love, honor, and cherish a woman. So the right. first time these couples hear those words is when they're standing in front of when each they're other. When they're getting married. When they're getting married. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're supposed to hold true to these words for the rest of their lives when they weren't raised on these values. Right. They were raised on materialistic values. They were raised on everything but love. You know, it was love of the money, not love of each other. You know? Oh, yeah, I yeah, I didn't really think of it like that. We were like a lot I feel like a lot of people are raised that way. And a lot of people are raised that way even <coughs> at, in out of love. Like not even talking necessarily about love. It, it is like, yo, know, get the good job. Um, you know, make sure you have <laughs> benefits, make sure you have this and like Granted, those things are important, but it's just not a yeah. super accurate or good way to really go about life because what it does is like it like dulls you creatively. Exactly. Because you know what, what if what if the person that you're meant to be with doesn't have those things yet, but with you, God says, Right, now I want to give this person that. Right. You'll never know if you don't give them a shot because they don't already have it. Right. You know, it's like I could be Somewhat, so like, for instance, I used to say, 
I want to meet the girl of my dreams before I blow up. Because if I don't meet her until after I blow up, how am I going to know she's for real? Who I am on the screen? You know, my status. And that's a freaking a pill to swallow. That's bro. kind of like, what I actually wanted to dive in a little bit. Um, you know? Yeah, like, did you? Ha- I'm sure you dealt with your fair share of that. Just people in in, yeah. in your life for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I mean, and then and then there's 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 the cold hard truth where you have to look at yourself and you got to say, you know, there's some things that you need to do in your own life too, to where you uh, deserve a certain type of woman in your life. So I've had to face that reality too. But then I I, I I started off in a way where I was, you know, being such a hopeless romantic, I was the kind of guy that whenever a girl I was attracted to batted her eyelashes at me, I was through. This is this is my notebook moment, you know? You're like, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is my Natalie Portman right here. Hold yeah, on. 100%. Is, yeah. You know what I mean? And then when it don't happen and it falls apart, I'm like, oh, that's that bullshit. You know, <laughs> and I'm just like crushed because I was like, I thought yeah. it was something that turned out to be something else. And yeah, my heart was all in, but they had other motives. Right. Do you let that deter you from uh, future relationships? Do you think? Like, no. Because I know a lot of people are like that, where they're like, they have one bad apple. They think it ruins like the next three relationships or the next yeah. ha- however many long. Is that something you guys have ever struggled with? I suffer with it every day. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Big special relationships. There's always that. There's a barrier. I always say there's a wall between, like myself and her. You know what I mean? I'm never. I'm not at a point in my life yet, and I know this to where I can knock that wall down, and, like, give you mm. that person I really want to be. You know what I mean? There's right. just there's something there still, yeah. and I can't find a way to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, for me is. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. So I I try and go into a new situation without the past complications on my mindset, because I'm like, I don't want to be assuming that this person is going to turn out to be the same way this person was, but also at the same time, it's, it's, it's a hard uh, thing to do. It's, it's a hard task. It's not an easy task. Uh, to uphold because the moment you start to see similarities in that new person, it resorts back to what the what the previous relationship yeah. did, like, and then you yeah. start to say, "Oh, hold on, maybe let me switch this out. Let me put this wall up because I think I see her coming this way." <laughs> and, yeah. that's, and that's exactly what it is. You like, know what I, mean? I get it all the time. You know, whether we're out or you know you're just <clears throat> at a table with girls and they're like. Oh, you're so sweet. I'm, you know, it's crazy that you're single and it's, it's not like, it's not crazy. Yeah. Like I'm content with my life. I have a beautiful two-year-old son, you know, I'm, I'm content with myself right now, but right. would I love someone in my life? Absolutely. But exactly. mentally, I just, I'm not ready to bring someone else in. That's a barrier. You, have, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It's as like, as you, you, I hear exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's it's a struggle because it's like you don't want to be alone but you don't want to put up with what you've put up with in the past anymore. and that's my problem i just i don't take i'll yeah. put this real quick like i don't i don't take no shit <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah i really don't i don't i'm not going through the motions i don't like here it is this right. is what you're gonna get you know what i mean this is what you're getting mm-hmm. i'm willing to change but you know, so does that person as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily changing. I think it's just more so like... Understanding. Right. Underst- yeah. yeah, understanding. And that person has to instill that in you to like, okay, you know what? Maybe I can trust this person again. You know, they have to put... Right. The, may, they might have to put in a little more work than someone maybe that isn't you. You right. know, but if, exactly. they're worth it, if they're worth it, then they will. Yeah. You know? yeah. But how you know is too, is they have to be willing to put forth just as much if not more effort than you right because right. if it feels like a one-sided relationship that i mean it is you know right so, yeah 100%. you know what i mean like yeah I've, I, I've dealt with the girls that uh claim to love me and i'm the one doing all the work like 
The only time we speak is when I call you or if I say I want to see you or if I'm asking, let's go out or just, how come you don't just show up? <laughs> how right. come you don't just call me and say, hey, can I see you? I like, use that as a test. It's funny you, know you just I mean? said that. Like, you know, you you meet a girl, you're texting her, whatever, you hang out, you go on a date mm -hmm. or whatever. You're always the first in the morning, like, I'm no, I'm that guy. I'm a simp when it comes like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. sometimes I simp a little bit harder than I should, but <laughs> I'm always like, hey, it's true. You know, good morning, beautiful. Hope you have a great day. And then it's like an hour later, boom. Hey, I like, I'm just, I'm just getting up. How are you? Mm -hmm. I did it two day, a day uh, yesterday. Yeah, I just didn't text her. Yeah. You text me now. Let's see how long this can go. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Super like, key, why yeah. am I the only one putting forth that effort? Right. You yeah. I mean? Exactly. And something um, too is like, uh, it has to be allocated over time. Like, I'm a firm believer in like you can't give someone 100 percent right away because then you have nothing else else left exactly. to give. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I've see I see people in my own life who who struggle with that, who are just such natural givers, which mm -hmm. is like amazing. But like, dude, it's like if you're giving 100 percent and they're only giving you 15 right now, what you're you're not allowing your the relationship to grow because when you're the constantly the one doing everything five years from now, it just it constantly just gets taken for granted. And that makes you feel exactly. shitty. You know what I'm saying? And then you feel mm -hmm. like you're doing something wrong or they're doing something wrong. And that's how the relationship fails. It has to be. There's no, I don't think it's 50, 50. I think it's a hundred, a hundred, but that mm -hmm. has to happen over a certain amount of time Over a certain amount of time, exactly. and within the right reasons and then within the right. Yeah. With like, you know, just like yeah. I said, just the right amount of time, you know? Yeah. Cause people can, two people can enter a relationship at two different levels of emotion. You know, you get the one person that may fall head over heels at first sight. Then the other person is like, I like you, but right. Let and me, with all, and figure out my stuff. Also, first. with ulterior motives, you know, exactly. someone wants to when someone wants to date someone from oh, yeah. you're big money from the blind side. Let me get the clout or whatever. I hate that word, but like it's yeah, true. Yeah. Like there's people you you at that it trust takes time me, to I've feel. Had my I trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sure you've been able to see right through that shit, though, man. I'm sure over time I you mean, kind now, of now, now, yeah. Before, yeah. You see, like that's, now, still, that's that's still happening to you. I mean, two relationships ago, okay. it did, but like, um, it, it sucks too because it, it it took long enough for me to invest real feelings mm. before it happened, right? You know, and then it was just like, I'm already at the point where I love her. Right. Now I find out her true colors, and I'm just right. like, this is some. That's Bullshit, the, you know that's I mean? one of the that's one of the most depressing <clears throat> things in the world though like just realizing someone's true colors you know when you think they're somebody that they're not exactly I know yeah. that, that's that's I've killed there, me a few times been there done that you know yeah and and uh, I think the thing for me too like one of the, one of the big red flags for me now is like because I believe that two people if two people like each other they can start off in a relationship. See, a lot of times girls will say, let's just be friends first and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you can't tell me in the beginning whether or not you're interested in dating me, I'm not saying let's date day one. Yeah. I'm saying let me know if there's an interest in that arena. Because right. if there's not, then yeah, we could be friends, but I'm going to go and you know, look, because I'm looking to date right now. I'm not looking to just be friends. You're not you going to I mean? waste your time. Exactly. Yeah, you're not, like, because because a lot of times we romanticize things. We we think about mm -hmm. a, a, the potential of something. So exactly. it's like, you know, if, I, if there's somebody that I'm going to date, I'm going to think about the potential. I'm going to dream about it. I'm going to think about it. Just because yeah. I know me, I'm when I date somebody, if I'm ever dating somebody, Quentin, and if you ever see me post about a girl, just know that I love that girl. Because <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. I don't really ever like share who I'm with or who I'm dating, whatever, unless I'm like a hundred percent sure about it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And exactly. it's like you and know, that's, but that's the same with me. Like if I post a girl that I'm dating with, I love her. You I'm dating, I mean? yeah. I'm you know what I mean? I, like we and yeah. I'm letting everybody know if they get caught up in your face when they know we together 
I'm gonna beat yeah. the dog shit out of them. That's what when I post that, that's what that means. Yeah. Like she's off limits. Don't go right, right. ahead. And you know what's crazy though? <laughs> like I, I I don't know, like think I've been in like a few relationships and I think back and I'm like, I don't know if I've ever truly loved somebody. Like in the way that like you know, you have the love where it's like, oh, you've been with them for a while. You kind of like have to say that low key, like, but then there's like that real love. Like, I don't know if I've ever had that like super like emotional support or like that person who completely understands what I'm trying to do. If that makes I've, sense. Yeah, I've, I've, I've experienced it. And, uh, it, uh, let's just say she was really good at acting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Damn. but it's 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 all good. It's um it's one of those things though, it's like now I pick up on certain things. Like if a girl tells me, let's be friends first and see, you know, what happens, I'll be like, uh oh, no, that's all right. You, you you go that way, I go this way. We you can know, just be because, we can just be cool. You know what I mean? You know like what I mean? we can just be cool. Like, it's like it's even not... back in the day, like I I've had girls say that to me, I'm like, I can't date right now. I'm knowing i'm in no condition or shape to date anyone right now we can just be friends and see where this goes three months later down the road on social media i never saw it coming <laughs> I mean, dude, i'm like what the yeah okay. yeah. Right. So, yeah so i'm dude i'm low-key well if this girl is watching this far in the episode congratulations so i just sold myself out but uh oh boy but now there, you're simping see now you're but, simping again on her. but there is there is a girl a certain girl who like i like a lot but it's so rare for me to like actually like somebody so when i do like somebody i come off a little bit more not like neat or anything like, i'm not like that just, but it's like i show more interest than usual like these girls exactly Girls love guys that are dickheads. You know what I mean? It's like... Girls, I always say this. Girls love a bad boy. They love someone who doesn't care. But like... like, Treat me like... You know, treat me like (laughs) shit and, you know, talk down to me. Like, they love that. So I always say it's like an adrenaline thing for them. Like, you just love that bad boy attitude. And it gets you nowhere. Well, you know why? It's because a lot of them have that bad girl attitude and they yeah. accept what they feel they deserve. So like, right. yeah. Like yeah. A lot of, I've had so many girls tell me, you're too nice. You're too nice. I wish you were meaner. Or, what the I fuck hate does that. that mean? I, I yeah, hate like, that. Who says that? They, that, 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 that's that. That, that kind of shit's going to turn someone toxic, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and like, exactly. it, it happened to me. It happened to me. But like, it's, and a lot of it too is like, girls want what they can't have. And it's like, if mm-hmm. it, and you know how many, you got girls all the time who have people like simping over them or like DMing them all the time, calling them all the time. But then that one guy who doesn't do it is the one that's ultimately going to stand out. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you don't got to be like the best looking dude, but like if she's, if she's like somewhat of interest and you're that guy who's different from all the other ones, you're going to stand out and she's going to want oh, you yeah. because she can't have you. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Was, that's uh, that's what I, that's what I'm going through right now. I, I can't yeah, have it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh shit, like, you know what I mean? But exactly, you know, it is what it is. But there was this TikTok post with this girl that did that. She did a video, and it was like, she's at this dating service, and the chick is running down a list of eligible bachelors, and she's like, this guy, you know, he has multiple shell corporations. He's super loaded, completely loves you, and he can take care of you for the rest of your life, and then some. You know, then the next guy, yeah, he has three houses in the Caymans and da da da. He could take care of you, boom, loves you. Oh, this guy, he's a piece of shit. Don't worry about it. He doesn't care for you anyway. And then, wait, what? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. like, she's like, wait, what? Wait, who? <clears throat> yep. what? But why does he? Why does he not want me? Yeah. You know, yep. it's like, it's that it just, re- catches their attention. It's that you reverse psychology, I mean? man. It's it's hundred. Exactly. It's, it's it's so true, and it's like it leads to <clears throat> it leads to like a healthy chase in a way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, 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 I always believe there is a healthy kind of chase where it's like, because na- I mean, naturally, you, you don't, you're not going to want to be with someone who's going to be like constantly texting you 24 seven. Like, it's like in the beginning, if that, if that, if that makes sense. But mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, you, like, there, like I said, there has to be a healthy chase. There has to be a little bit of a given. It's, it's all about give and take. It goes back exactly. to the hundred percent. It goes back to the hundred, a hundred. Well, but that's that's where that's where the whole loving yourself and and you know, having values about yourself comes into play in a relationship like that. Because when you love yourself, you know what you will and won't put up with. And you also, you're not going to put that person above you right 
in the beginning because they haven't earned that spot yet. You know what I mean? So there's people more important in your life than that person. This is someone you like and you want it to possibly go somewhere. But right now, in the beginning, you're not the most important person in my life. You <laughs> yeah, gotta see, that's that where spot. I screw up. I always put them like I, I always tell all my boys, I put them on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. They're the best. And, and in reality, and that's where it's a mess you know, up. That's you hard know? though. And that's hard yeah. though. I mean, it's hard, but it's like when you think about it, especially with girls that's attracted to you, what were they attracted to initially? Right. When they attract when they were attracted to you initially, were you all over them? No. You were doing you and they Shit. were attracted to that. So if you continue doing you, that attraction yep. will grow because yeah. you doing you wasn't all about them. Right. You know what I mean? Once you became all about them, all they right. see when they look in the mirror is all the their flaws and their bad shit. And so they're like, what type of person are you if you love all of the things that I hate about myself? Right. right. And it's that is a turnoff to them. So continue being you and putting your best foot forward for your best benefit, that attracts them because they, they feed off of that energy and they can learn to love themselves by watching you love you the way you do. No, nah, this is, I love this stuff. This is one yeah. of the reasons why I even started doing a podcast in the first place is to have conversations with people such as yourself. And, you know, not, you know, luckily I'm able to get someone like you who has been doing, who has done these great things in their life. And, mm -hmm. you know, the viewers are able, you know, we're able to humanize you and like kind of have a real conversation with you and talk about shit that people may not be, people may relate to, which is, you know, what you, what you touched on. Exactly. You know, and you know, it's, it's someone different because you have credibility, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's a, we all want to know that we relate to some and and we're relatable. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. People, people feel alone a lot of times in their grief or their trauma or their drama or whatever. And that's why they keep it to themselves because they feel like no one's going through what they're going through. And it's mm -hmm. like, no. Everyone's going through what you're going through. Yeah, hundred percent. But if it's, none yeah. of you talk, you don't know it. Right. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's crazy. Like the so I don't want to cut you off, but this this uh, Eagles player Lane Johnson, he's a he's on the, I think he's a lineman for the Eagles, mm -hmm. and um, he recently just talked about like mental health. Like he had to walk away from the team for a little bit because well, probably because we stink. But like he uh, also was saying like how. Like he was seriously, he was struggled with anxiety and he struggled with a lot of stuff and he's been doing a lot of interviews lately and just like, just talking about it and being super open about his mental health. And it's like, people have gained a lot of respect for him because when you're an athlete or you're an actor or you're some kind of person who is put on a pedestal, you think everyone thinks their life is perfect, you know? So it gives people relatability, you know, people are, Oh, Lane Johnson is one of my favorite players and he goes through this. Oh wow! Then that means I'm not alone, and I'm able to cope with it. Maybe how he is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, for people to be open and just have these kind of conversations, it's like, you know, it, it does it does nothing but good for people. You know? Yeah, exactly. And it I helps. It, it helps people that may be covering up something they need to talk about. Yeah, people I, have to stop wearing masks. I always say that I do it every mm -hmm. day. I wear a mask. I'm not like a COVID mask or like. You know, literal, but like I always say, I have a mask over me. Um, unfortunate event, lost my brother eleven years ago. Oh man, I struggle with it. Oh, thank you. I struggle with it a lot. You talking to me right now, you probably would never know that. You would never think I go through life with a lot of what ifs and a lot of anger and everything. I don't talk to a soul. I don't mm. talk to nobody about it. I hold my feelings in, whatever else, so be it. But I've also put, I've also been put in places with other people that have had the same situation, losing a sibling at a young age and being able to sit down with them and talk and like, you know, how did I go through things? You know, what am I doing currently? <clears throat> you know, what could they do? And I felt like I probably helped a couple people mm -hmm. <clears throat> in a sense, but... You know, taking that mask off and opening up and getting help in a, in, in a sense, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to come out of that 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 
blockage place. you know what i mean it's yeah, it's rough yeah yeah but, but being open about it naturally heals you too you know? right like exactly you, you opening that conversation seals another wound in a way because you're able to like i always say like when you speak things manifest things you put things out there you're also able to hear yourself as well and mm-hmm. you're also be like oh maybe you know maybe it, like, it's kind of comforting knowing that you feel this way and that you're able to cope with it and you're also able to see like how far you've come as well you know what i mean yeah. so and um but yeah I, th- I didn't i'm not gonna lie i thought you were getting a little political I was like, oh shit he's talking about masks right now i'm like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh, but but now nah, like nah but it is true that man and and i do like respect you talking about that because even before you came on like when we would talk like at, at the bar that i dj at we would have these conversations and like it was just like it was it was really it was nice because it was like you know someone else is going through some of the similar things that maybe i go through or or somebody else goes through so you know what i mean so that's that's what kind of got us close you know, yeah, we were able to have those conversations before yeah. we were even able to sit down with you, you know, so. And a lot of people always say, like, it's, you know, he's tattooed right on my arm. You know what I mean? I have a tattoo with a cross and his name on it. Um, and people are always like, oh, who's that? And I'm like, oh, it's my brother. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, whatever. Like, and they always say, well, what happened? And they're like, oh, never mind. Like, you don't have to talk about it. And I'm like, no, like, here, I'll tell yeah. you whatever you want to know. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I've gotten to that point in my life. Where life goes on. Yeah. I've been put in situations. I've done and seen a lot of things <laughs> that most people haven't seen or have done. So, you know, it makes me stronger in a sense. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. One bad situation. You know, for that one bad situation, there's been a million other great situations. Right. You know what I mean? And you grow from what you lost yeah and you're and able to help another person exactly by talking about exactly. it and same thing with you i'm sure quinn you go through all the time is like when you're bullied and when you're struggling with you know going through everything with your acting and just trying to make it and having your dreams and goals and your adversity you know you being open and talking about it is helping another person you know exactly so you know that's part of the reason why i started speaking because not only because it was helping other people but i found it therapeutic for me Right. Um, you know, what's the main thing they ask you to do when you go to see a counselor or when you go to therapy? It's talk. Right. <laughs> exactly. Know, yeah. You don't go there for the doctor to do all the talking. You go there because <laughs> you're supposed to do the talking and yeah, they evaluate I, I th- the situation. I think the therapist figures out the why, you know, the why mm-hmm. of why you struggle with this or why you feel this way. And they just help guide you a little bit. You know what I mean? They help try exactly. to talk you through it in a way because they're, you know, they're, they're educated to, you know, they're educated mm-hmm. to know why your brain acts this way or why your body gives off this certain chemical or, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, but, but, but yeah. I think it's, it's our life experiences that gives us the, the know-how to be able to give others advice based on stuff we've already been through. You know, it's like, cause I always tell people when I talk, especially at schools, I'm not a scholar. I don't have a PhD in psychiatry. You know, the only thing I can do is tell you my story, tell you what I've been through and how I got over it, you know, and, and I, and I, I do it to say you and I are not that much different. You know, I, I go through things like you go through things. I've gotten over things like you will if you haven't yet gotten over it, you know, and coming from where I came from and getting to where I've gotten to means that you can do the same thing in your life. You know, uh, um, you have to see past your struggles, see past your pain into your succession. You know, if you don't believe that you're going to succeed, then you're, you're already defeated yourself. So you have to believe in that success in order to you know, do it. And, and the best way to do that is to see past that pain that you're currently in, you know? And so that's why I speak on things like that is because it's what I've done and it worked for me. So, you know, maybe it can work for others as well. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. And I'm excited to see what you do. I'm excited to see how you change more people's lives. Um, this was a a really good conversation, especially for a Monday. It really set the week off in a good yeah. day for me. <laughs> yeah, thank um, you, thank I'm you. super, I'm super thankful you're able to give me your time. Um, cause I Definitely. know you're, you're, you're so ambitious and you're working on a lot of things and I'm so excited just to see where it goes. And I'm excited to build this relationship. 
with me and you awesome. and Rob. But yeah, so Quinn, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, we appreciate it. You're an amazing uh, no person. Problem. You're the goat, Thank man. You, man. I Big try to be. I try to be. You're the you man. Know? I, I, I love the fedora too, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I meant to <laughs> say you. that earlier, but um, I didn't. I didn't get a haircut yet. So hey. like, <laughs> hell yeah, but dude, I love the fit. But uh, yeah. Thank so you. this is uh, episode 32 of the Loft. Um, we're like I said, guys, we're working on the set. You know, it's coming along. It's it's coming along. It's coming right. along. No judging go. going on. Right? Yeah, I'll send you nah, some pictures when it's finished, progress. but. But yeah, so um, yeah, so this is episode thirty-two of the Loft. I'm Kevin Nichols. That's I'm Rob, Rob Rudolph. Rudolph, and that's Quentin Aaron, aka <laughs> Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin, you're the man, man. I appreciate you, bro, and I hope you have a, a great, uh, great career. And you know, I hope you keep doing what you're doing. And I wish you the most luck on your production company. Yeah, absolutely. As well.